So good morning, everybody. Welcome back to TTK for those who are here. Nice to see all of you again. And also welcome to those who are online. Uh, good to have everybody here. This is our first attempt to come back to, uh, to a hybrid way of school of the work in order to promote again this uh, culture of encounter, not with God, but also with each other. But don't worry, those who are still online, you're very welcome also to join us as we gradually make these steps to normalize you know, our work to each other again. So uh, before anything else, let us listen to a song to open this space. Begin with a and begin with a little prayer in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We thank you, Heavenly Father. You are the creator of heaven and earth. You are our help whenever we need you. And you are the one who always comes to us first before we even seek you. Thank you for this day. Thank you for your word and the true expression of that 
of love and confidence. Let us be faith, let our prayer this morning and help us to hear your voice once again so close to our hearts, so close to our lives. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. May the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. So once again, welcome. Uh, before anything else, let us listen to the readings of this coming Sunday. Reading from the Book of Wisdom. Before the Lord, the whole universe, peace of the grave from the bowels, or a drop of morning dew, come down on the earth. But you have mercy on all, because you can do all things. And you overlook people's sins that they may repent. For you all love things that are a lot nothing that you have made. For what you hated, you will not have to do. And also, I think you may have a few minutes. Their own days, because they are yours. Oh Lord, the lover of souls, for your peaceful spirit is all between all things. Therefore, you rebuke offenders, little by little, watch them, and remind them of the sins they have. They are committed, but they have abandoned their wickedness, and you do this to all of them. The foretelling from I will praise your name forever, my King and my God. I will praise your name forever, my King and my God. I will restore you all of God and King. And I will bless your name forever and ever. Every day, do I bless you? And I will praise your name forever and ever. The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness. The Lord is good to all and compassionate toward all his works. Let all your works give you thanks, O Lord, and let your faithful ones bless you. Let them discourse of the glory of your kingdom and speak of your might. The Lord is faithful in all his words and holy in all his works. The Lord gives the fall who are falling. And raise up all who are found God. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Brothers and sisters, we always pray for you that our God may make you worthy of his calling and powerfully bring to fulfillment every good purpose and every effort of faith. That the Lord, that the name of the Lord Jesus may be glorified in you and you in him. 
in accord with the grace of our God and our Lord Jesus Christ. We ask you, brothers and sisters, with regard to the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our assembling with him, not to be shaken out of your mind suddenly or to be alarmed, either by a spirit or by an oral statement or by a letter allegedly from us to the effect that the day of the Lord is at hand. The word of the Lord. Right. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Saint Luke. At that time, Jesus came to Jericho and intended to pass through the town. Now, a man learning the chaos. Who was, a tax, who was a chief tax collector and also a wealthy man, was seeking to see who Jesus was. But he could not see him because of the crowd, for he was short in stature. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore tree in order to see Jesus, who was about to pass that way. When he reached the place, Jesus looked up and said, Zacchaeus, come down quickly, for today I must stay at your house. And he came down quickly and received him with joy. When they all saw this, they began to grumble, saying, He has gone to stay at the house of a sinner. But Zacchaeus stood there and said to the Lord, Behold, half of my possessions, Lord, I shall give to the poor, and if I have exhorted anything from anyone, I shall repay it four times over. And Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because this man too is a descendant of Abraham. For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save what was lost. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So, once again, good morning. Welcome. And uh, how wonderful the readings of this Sunday. I think this morning, my main objective would be this, to share something about the readings and to leave you with those readings in order that we can slowly, um, as you like to say in verbal way, to assimilate and to understand it for your own life, to appropriate it for ourselves. So let me just put on the slides uh, for this little presentation. And then we can uh, end it. Great. So I hope you can see that. Is it okay? Great. So the title of today's uh, reflection regarding the readings is Making Haste. All right. Making Haste in Jesus' Encounter. So Jesus' Encounter, meaning our encounter with Him. But his encounter with us. So who's the one making haste? We or him? That's the question no? for this morning. Making haste. And that's the, you can see that our famous character, Zacchaeus and Jesus, no climbing the tree. But anyway, let's, let's try to prepare ourselves for prayer. Remember that uh, when we pray with the word of God, it's not just about reflection, but it's about having a conversation with Jesus in our time of prayer. So just a, a little warm up, some words from St. Therese, you know, the, they call the saint of our century or of modern times. She said, for me, prayer is a search of the heart. Beautiful expression, spontaneously coming from the heart. It is a simple look, turn toward heaven. 
like Mother Teresa used to say also, when you feel down, just look up to heaven and smile <laughs> because somebody is smiling at you also. So a simple look turn to heaven, a cry of recognition and of love, embracing both trial and joy, embracing life as it is. So this morning, let us ask for this spirit of prayer also, to learn to turn to heaven and to recognize somebody looking at us, who's teaching us to embrace joy and also trial as part of the joy in life. A little bit more about this day. Actually, the keyword for today is encounter. All right, encounter, prayer and encounter. Do you remember this uh, man on the hour of Pope Emeritus, Benedict XVI? He used to say this phrase that Pope Francis um, repeats a lot. He said, being a Christian is not the result of an ethical choice or a lofty idea. So it's not like, okay, let's do the right thing. That's not Christianity yet. Right? Or let's let's leave, let's live, let us live these high ideals you know, about God and life. And Pope Benedict says it's not there yet. What is Christianity all about? The encounter with an event, a person. Christianity is to encounter Jesus. That's what he's trying to say. And this encounter with Jesus, the person of Jesus, that we make into an event of our life, something real happens in that encounter, which gives life a new horizon and a decisive direction that changes our lives. Do you agree? Meeting Jesus cannot but change us. Maybe not in a very fantastic way or special way, maybe for some of us, yes. But for many of us, day by day, it's little things that happen that transforms our way of thinking, our way of looking at life and learning to enjoy it as it is, not as it is. Okay? Uh, so that's Benedict's, but we have a new pope now. We have two popes, by the way, if you haven't watched the show. <laughs> we have two popes in our century, and if Pope Francis retired, we'll have three. <laughs> so let's see what happens. Anyway, he, he picks it up from there, what Pope Benedict said. I'll try to read this slowly. What about this encounter? Not he wants to emphasize. Francis says, thanks solely to this encounter with Jesus or a renewed encounter, because we might have already encountered him. With God's love, which blossoms into an enriching friendship, we are liberated from our narrowness and self-absorption. <laughs> so Pope Francis tries to uh, describe a bit more the effects of this encounter with the, the love of God to bring us out from our self-absorption. And then he says, we become fully human when we become more than human. Prayer is meant to make us more human, more humane, in our relationships, the way we treat each other, the way we treat ourselves and our world. You know, we talk a lot about psychology, uh, sorry, uh, ecology with Laudato Si. But there was a new film that Pope Francis, uh, well, it was released in the honor of him. The letter, I'm not sure if you've seen it, it's on YouTube already. The letter, a message from Pope Francis. All this, we become more human when we become more than human. Prayer brings us beyond our human capacity of love. For example, when you say, I can't do this anymore. I don't want to love this person anymore. To forgive again? More than human is what God is asking of us as Christians. And we need the encounter with Him. When we let God bring us beyond ourselves, in order to attain the fullness of our being. So prayer brings us beyond what we think of ourselves to become who we were really meant to be. You know, more than human. This, this was just a little picture of Pope Francis, you know. <laughs> a little boy came up to disturb him and he just didn't mind it. You know, I think I would get quite upset, you know, with the priest standing there, 
and then you're preaching in a world disturbing, and he says, okay, there he is. <laughs> and sorry, just to finish this same phrase, no, uh, quite a long phrase from the joy of the gospel. Uh, look at the same thing there, no? It says here, here in this encounter, we're still with the encounter, all right? We find the source and inspiration of all our efforts of evangelization. Without this encounter, evangelization has no meaning. All our activities, no matter how good, he says, have to find this inspiration in the encounter with Jesus. For if we have received the love which restores meaning to our lives, how can we fail to share that love with others? Okay, having said so much up to this point, or read so much, this is my point for today. The encounter that we have received, if we have received so much encountering Jesus, how can we not share it to others? And that is our challenge for this Sunday, for the readings from this Sunday. To be generous to share what we have already received. And if we have not received it, then try to receive it. This encounter with Jesus. All right, so, so just giving a little panorama about what these readings are about. It's basically, let us encounter Jesus. Let us make peace. Let us not wait too long to meet him and to let him meet us. Okay, so let's go to the readings uh, themselves. For this Sunday. Making prayer an encounter. Right today, let us try to go through this. Let us make our prayer not just a type of meditation, but an encounter with someone. That's why we say prayer is not just reflection, prayer is talking to Jesus. Jesus, what do you want to tell me this morning? Beautiful starting point. Jesus, what would you like to say to me today? And then we read the readings from that point of view, that perspective, and to allow Jesus to encounter us. Let's go to the Gospel of today, you know, from Luke 19, which I will, uh, I will encourage you later on if you just look for it uh, yourself. St. Luke says, At that time, Jesus came to Jericho and intended to pass through the town. Now a man there named Zacchaeus, who was a chief tax collector and also a wealthy man, was seeking to see who Jesus was. At that time, Jesus came. How can we bring this to the encounter with us today? What is that time? That time is now. Now Jesus wants to come to you in prayer. So not only for Zacchaeus, we are the Zacchaeus today. And Jesus wants to come. And how beautiful to ask Jesus. Really? To me? <laughs> you want to come now to me? And it's beautiful those words uh, that are stated there. He came to Jericho and intended to pass through the town. He wanted something. He had an intention for going to Jericho. What was that intention? Later on, we will see in the gospel, Zacchaeus. He was looking for Zacchaeus. Sometimes we feel that we are looking for God, but he's the first one looking for me now. How is Jesus looking for you? How has Jesus been seeking the encounter with you during this past week? Perhaps it's a nice also to when we pray to pray with our lives. And to ask that, oh, Jesus, how are you looking for me? Through that person, perhaps. Through something that happened that disturbed me. <laughs> Sometimes it's going through life so quickly, and we have no time to be aware of God. And he's trying to draw our attention. Like in Zacchaeus. But this seeking is mutual, as we see here. There was a chief tax collector, and I don't know why St. Paul had to mention that he was wealthy also. <laughs> What's the big deal? <laughs> why did you why did St. Luke have to say that he was rich and he was a tax collector? I mean, this tax collector like Matthew. 
Is something there in these words that perhaps I'll leave you to think about it. All right. Luke had to mention that he was wealthy as well. But the, the, the important thing for me of that case is be wealthy, be the chief, the head tax collector. He was seeking to see who Jesus was. Which one is Jesus? There's something in him that made me long to see Jesus. Perhaps so I've heard so much about this man. I've heard perhaps about what he can do for my life. Do you think Zacchaeus was happy to be a tax collector? To be despised by everyone? To be an outcast in another way? What was he longing for that he was seeking to see who Jesus was? And I like these words, who Jesus was, which one is he? I have seen so many Jesuses. <laughs> Which one is the real Jesus that can save me, that can redeem me? You know, uh, before I was uh, became a Christian, I was a, became Christian at the age of 21. Huh? For those who know my story, I was baptized at 21. I have a Buddhist background. And you know, for Buddhists, we believe in Buddha, right? <laughs> Obvious, uh, you know, for this. But do you know there are many different kinds of Buddha? There are many different kinds. And I grew up with this Buddha with a big ear lobe. Have you seen that? The big button who's sitting and talking quietly. That <laughs> is the Chinese Buddha. Okay. And to my surprise, when I studied Buddhism, after I went to study, I went to see all the original statues of Buddha. And to my surprise, he was so thin. <laughs> he was so thin. He was so shabby and obscure. I said, this has nothing to do with the Buddha that I know. The big year long means you have a lot of poetry, no? <laughs> okay. So the, the image of Buddha somehow, because Buddhism came from India, right? Uh, somehow the image of Buddha modified itself as time went on and through different cultures. And we Chinese, we love money. <laughs> sorry, sorry for the, me, okay? <laughs> And so the Buddha that they began to believe in was a fat one. I don't want to say Buddha. I need a fat one. I want the one with big ear lobes who is lucky and fortunate. I want the smiling one, not the obscure and serious Buddha. And so somehow it modified itself to become the Buddha that the culture wanted. Who is the Jesus that you know? Is it the real original Jesus? Or is it a modified, evolved Jesus that makes us feel comfortable? Is that the real Jesus that who wants to present himself? The thing is, no matter how sinful he could be, was seeking the real Jesus. And he's an example for us to love. Look for the real Jesus who wants to show himself, not to encounter him. Who is the Jesus that you encounter in your life? Who is the Jesus? Maybe we can spend some time this morning to describe him for ourselves. Is he our, like my big Buddha, <laughs> the big belly? Or is he the scrawny one and the austere one? But maybe we can apply to our own ways, um, our own lives. Is he the sad one who's always angry? Is he the Jesus who's upset with us all the time? Is he always looking at our sins and telling us what we did right or wrong? Is that the Jesus whom we pray to, whom we know? But the bigger question is, is that the true Jesus? Who did Jesus come to show himself to be? Today's first reading is so beautiful. I invite you to read it throughout the week, <laughs> throughout the week, to understand who God really is. For you love all things that are. This is our Jesus. You love all things that are. You don't hate anything or anyone. And nothing that exists is something that you don't love. 
You love nothing that you have made because you made everything. Nothing in this world was not created by you, except evil, of course. But even evil people were created by you. <gasps> For what you hated, you would not have passion. If you have hated someone, you would not have formed this person. If you have hated this culture, this people, you would not have formed them. Sometimes we don't like a certain group of people or kind of people, and God says, I fashion them. And how could a thing remain unless you will it? So if anything exists, if anyone exists, it's because God wants it. God wants that person or that reality to exist. How could it be preserved? Had it not been called for by you? Wow. This group here. How could we be here if we had not been called for by God Himself? God is amazing. He is a creator, and He said, But you spare all things, you're very kind, you're very merciful to all, because they are yours. They are yours. God owns everyone. And he owns not just in a, in a demanding way, no, I own you, not in that way. But he owns us out of love. Nobody wants to own you. I own you. No, I assume you. Oh Lord, you are a lover of souls. In another Bible version, a lover of life. You love life. You don't hate life. You love life. This is the Jesus who came to show himself. Our Lord is a lover of life. I like this thing, but I can't remember which movie it's from. Maybe it's from Master. <laughs> but the point here is a Jesus who is surrounded by people. He loves all kinds of people who go around him. He doesn't shun them. He's so in love with life. <laughs> uh, sometimes you know, as Jesus is. Only on the cross, you know, by himself, alone. And he had those moments. But he loved life. Jesus, help me to know you as a lover of life. Jesus, help me to know you as a lover of my life. Jesus, help me to know you as a lover of the life of everyone, of the poor of those that are fortunate, those who are sad, you love their lives. How can I make them, help them to love their own lives? You know, uh, many of you know our founder right now, Jaime Bonet. You know, the, the first time I attended a retreat with him, the retreat here, every year, right, we go for a week for a month, that's why some of us <laughs> are asked to preach the guidelines. <laughs> And one of these retreats, he said something that I will always remember. He said, you know why we are missionaries? Because there's nothing better you can do with your life than to make people happy. There's nothing better you can do with your life than to make people happy. Why are we here? Why are we here? Why are we not enjoying life as it is? Helping each other to enjoy life. Why is there so much sadness in the world? Why break the good news? We call it good news. Good news is meant to make people happy. And that is our God who loves life and is inviting us to help others also. Haven't you discovered something beautiful of your life, about your life? Help others also to know this. Sorry, this is just a... Um, a rosary promotion. <laughs> These are called the luminous mysteries. Uh, you know that I think most of us, they were started off or promoted by a certain pope as well. Today we're talking about all the popes. Yeah. This is John Paul II. Do you remember we have all the different mysteries about the historical mysteries about Mother Mary, the sorrowful mysteries about the sufferings of Jesus, and the glorious mysteries when he rose into heaven. 
Especially now, just for the second birthday, there's something missing. It's all about this suffering. It's all about this death. It's all about life in heaven. When when life is better in heaven, it's about life here. Jesus came to show us what life is all about. How beautiful life can be. We are missing something here in the life of Jesus. And that's why he started to promote the luminous mystery. The life of Jesus. You can see here his baptism, his the wedding at Cana, enjoying married life, not promoting married life there. And say how joyful it could be, turning water into wine for them, to have preaching the gospel, saying that life is meant to be shared to everyone, not just for ourselves. The transfiguration. Life can change. He was saying that it can be transfigured. And of course, in the Eucharist, when he said, You know what? I will be with you always to show you the beauty of life. So let's pray more of the luminous mystery. Of course, all of them, all right? The sorrowful still help a lot, the joyful ones, <laughs> and the glorious ones, because that's our final hope. But let's not forget the beauty of the luminous mystery about life. Jesus teaching us about life. Now let us go back to the longing of the days to see Jesus. Today I invite you to connect to your own longing to see Jesus. Do you long to see Jesus? Do you know people who might long to know Jesus through you, through us? Here, the Word of God says, Zacchaeus could not see Jesus because of the crowd and because he was short. <laughs> and you can see the picture there. I really like this one. It's so short. Everybody was standing in front. I want to see him, but we cannot. Like a little kid there. And so, what did he, what did he do? He ran ahead and climbed a tree. Would you do that? We do that maybe for our for BTS. No, we don't do that. <laughs> oh, no, I can't see them. <laughs> and I'll climb the tree to see them in order to see Jesus, who was about to pass that way. As he said, Jesus wants to pass by in prayer, he wants to pass by our lives. How much are we willing to put him to see him? To see him. Like Zacchaeus, what are you short of in the encounter with Jesus? Are you short of time? Are you short of faith? Are you short of courage to do things like he did? What are you short of? Zacchaeus was not ashamed of his joy, but he tried to overcome that shortness. How can you run ahead and climb the sycamore tree in your life? How can you make the effort to overcome that shortness? Perhaps you can think about this. Why is it hard to pray sometimes as we encounter Jesus? Maybe something that we lack. Do you like faith? No, according to that. Let's go back, go deeper into this longing. Why do people want to see Jesus? Why do people want to see Jesus? You know, sometimes they feel lost. Do you know somebody who feels lost in their life? Yes, Father, maybe you are. <laughs> apart from you, apart from you. <laughs> we are very fast to look at our own self. Well, somebody is feeling lost. Sometimes they feel that they're not good enough. Do you know people who feel like that? You know what? I'm not good enough. I'm not good enough for my, my children. I'm not good enough for my parents. I'm not good enough for life. You know, all these feelings that we have. I like the picture of the little boy, the Asian boy. Sometimes people are so frustrated. They don't know where to turn. You know, or that parent there who doesn't know how to handle the children anymore. This is, I think, a typical pandemic picture. No, they were previous two years, like my brother was telling me, oh my goodness, 
they don't have to go to school, how hard is it? <laughs> they go to the house and taking care sometimes. Sometimes it's not about ourselves that we long to see Jesus. It's for those we care about, we don't know what to do. That also makes us long for him. Those who are lonely, those who feel abandoned, why don't we pray for them also today and to think about them? Don't to put on names of persons that we can pray for. Jesus said to Zacchaeus, and he says to us, Today I must stay at your house. Today I must stay at your house. We can try to put our names there in our prayer. Oh, this is the verbal day, we like to do that. Replace the name Zacchaeus with our own name. Michael, today I must stay at your house. Put your own name there. Regina, today I need to stay in your house. No, Michelle. No, Raymond, I need to stay in your house today. Sorry, I can't mention all the names. But, <laughs> but it's a beautiful exercise when God speaks to us. It says here, when Jesus reached the place where Zacchaeus was in the tree, he looked up and said, Zacchaeus, come down quickly, for today I must stay at your house. And the beautiful thing there is, he came down quickly and received him with joy. You know, this is a very beautiful thing. We just Bible in Greek. Those words are exactly the same. They come down quickly. Jesus said, come down quickly. And the case came down quickly. <laughs> it's exactly the same. I don't know what Luke was trying to say. Let's obey Jesus. Let's do exactly what he said. Come down quickly. Where are you now? Where are you hanging around here? Just come down. Come down where you are. The case, I came to look for you. And don't you think it was funny? It was such a huge crowd there. And Jesus managed to look at the case and say, Hey, I must stay at your house. Why him? Everybody started to complain. Why him? Jesus knows us. I came for you. And let's just talk as friends. And everything happens when I stay in your house. So don't worry. Don't worry. Um, when they all saw this, they began to grumble, saying, We have gone to stay at the house of the sinner. You know the story, no? How come him? Why him? And then, but Zacchaeus stood there and said to the Lord, Behold, half of my possessions, Lord, I shall give to the poor. Oh, something is happening to this guy. <laughs> it was mentioned at the beginning, he was wealthy, and he still gave half. Really? No? <laughs> And if I have extorted anything from anyone, I shall repay it four times over. By saying, I'm sincere, Lord. I will give back if I was dishonest. Something happened in the Hades. There was a change. But it all comes from Jesus wanting to stay in his house. The title here says, oh, Things start to happen when Jesus comes to stay in your home. Is Jesus staying already in your home? Is Jesus staying already in your home? Not just in your heart, okay? In your home. Just a we share this reflection. You know, something happened in my life when Jesus came to my home. To my home. I, I will share, you know, I was not a Christian all my life. I uh, actually I grew up quite rebellious, but they don't like to call it confession time. So I do like to stay at home. Thank you to God for those who like to stay at home with your parents and your family. And I, I, I just didn't feel welcome in my own house. It's a long story, but anyway, not because I have bad parents, but they just to be curious. There's something there. And then um, I remember my sister started to join some charismatic movement. And I didn't like them at that time. You know, they speak the tongues, they do praise and worship, and I didn't understand it. So uh, I kind of avoided them. And But something that attracted me was my sister started to treat me better. 
How did you treat these customers? I think you were always fighting at one point. <laughs> so, and we had some conflict and we were kind of like silent treatment for a long time. Uh, and suddenly she started treating better. What's going on? And she, you know, I used to, I'm the youngest by the way, you know, I used to leave my clothes all over the place and she picked them up. She said, oh my God, I left my grass, my, my cup and my place there because of laziness and she washed them. But this is impossible. Something is happening to her. And I got so curious that and she said, you know what? It's because of this group that I had. So this charismatic renewal. Then I started to pray. Pray what's that? I had no idea. So I wanted to know them and all that. But before I went to the group, the group came to our house. Oh my god. <laughs> I was like, what's going on? <laughs> I locked my room. <laughs> I'm not going to go out there. Whatever happened to my sister that was so good, never mind. <laughs> but you know, they kept coming back week after week. And after a while, her friends started to reach out to her younger brother. To talk to me and they were very nice people. And said, are they for real? <laughs> and I said, do something so genuine. And they were like, so I, I kind of walked up, I got used to them, and I started to join them with that charismatic meetings. I must say that I wasn't still so comfortable at that time, but I saw something real, something real. And from that experience, actually, she first reached out to my brother, I have a brother also. My brother went back to church because of that. I started to go back to church. My mom started to go to church, and my dad started to go to church. And I was like, wow, things start to happen when Jesus comes to stay in your house. How can we help each other to bring Jesus to our homes? You know, uh, for some of us, it could be easier. For some of us, it's a bit more difficult. Uh, like, if you have a brother like me, it would be difficult to bring Jesus home. But as a community, as a community, we can help each other to do that. To bring Jesus right into our homes, to transform them, things start to happen by themselves. Mission last Sunday was Mission Sunday. And today I would just like to propose something uh, to deepen on that Mission Sunday. Mission is person. Person. Mission is house to house. Mission in our day, this is, these are the words of Pope Francis, okay? These are not my words. This mission in our day cannot be bring them to church. That's not good enough. And many times, that doesn't work. You know, so once you can bring to church, I know people who have been to church before. And they just, you know, were in Christian for a while, or they already like going to church. Francis said, we need to bring church to them. Person to person, house to house. Jesus said to Zacchaeus, today salvation has come to this house. Jesus didn't just go to the synagogue. He went to the house. Of the chaos. And sometimes, I'm sorry to say this, sometimes in the Catholic Church, we are quite weak in doing the house to house. And the house to house. We like the church, but not the house so much. This man, too, is a descendant of Abraham. For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save what was lost. Jesus didn't come to seek. Church goers only, primarily. He came to seek those who don't want to go to church. But where are they? In the house. <laughs> In the houses. Sorry, it's a bit long, but I'll just read it anyway. No, it's it's self-explanatory. This is what Pope Francis is saying. Today, as the church seeks to experience a profound missionary renewal, there is a kind of preaching 
which falls to each of us as a daily responsibility, not only Sunday or church days. It has to do with bringing the gospel to the people we meet, whether they be our neighbors or complete strangers. Kind of tough with the pandemic, right? Let us think about this. Let's think about this. This is an informal preaching which takes place in the middle of a conversation, something along the lines of what a missionary does when visiting a home. Missionary visiting houses is not counted, no? Because missionaries like to go to houses to eat. <laughs> so it's no marriage, no marriage there. But for us, he said, for all the lay as well to visit homes. Wow, that is something. That is really something. Being a disciple means being constantly ready to bring the love of Jesus to others. Wow, that's challenging. Uh, we need a lot of prayer for that. And this can happen unexpectedly and in any place. On the street, in a city square, doing work on a journey. Very simple words and very simple context. But very challenging for Pope Francis. How can we reach person to person in our mission as disciples of Christ? No, not only in this form of preaching, which we need, so please, those who are preparing, please continue, <laughs> but also face to face, the courage to share about Jesus explicitly, not about him. Just to finish, I would just like the word to present the words of the second reading from St. Paul to the Thessalonians. He said, Brothers and sisters, we always pray for you that our God may make you worthy of his calling, the call to follow him as disciples, and powerfully bring to fulfillment every good purpose and every effort of faith. Like St. Paul is saying, I know all your efforts. And I know all your efforts also. You're really working so hard for your faith. May the Lord bring it more powerfully, not the fulfillment, that the name of our Lord Jesus may be glorified in you. And I like this part. And you glorified in him. Jesus is so generous. He doesn't just want himself to be glorified in your life. He wants you. He wants us. To be glorified in Him through this personal encounter with God and also with others, in accord with the grace of our God and our Lord Jesus Christ. So today I will leave you with these questions for our prayer time and reflection. Um, once again, I invite you to go back first to the readings you know, of today. And to see how beautiful they are, really. But as you read them, these are some questions that can help us for our prayer and dialogue with Jesus. First, how does God show Himself to you as the God and lover of life? How does He show Himself to you in your daily life that He's a God of life, not of death? He's the God who loves life. He doesn't hate any part of it, and he wants us to help us to love life as well. Second, what is it in you that perhaps no, will give you haste to encounter Jesus? Remember, we talked about the longing of Zacchaeus. What is it in you that makes you long in haste to encounter Jesus? And interestingly, in this question, you can also ask. Jesus, why are you so hurried to encounter and to stay with me? Jesus, what about you? Why are you so much in pain to stay with me? Ask him also. And lastly, I'm sorry to be so concrete, but just to make us pray and to think about this. Who is the person or the home that he invites you to reach out to? I just put there this week, but you really cannot this week, don't worry. <laughs> but just to think about this, who's the person or the home that he invites you to reach out to? If you can, to think about this this week, like 
say, let's not wait too long. Let's not wait too long. And whenever we feel the invitation to reach out, we can just do this with time out. You know? Let's pray about that also. You know, that this kind of kindness and to pray with the will of God and to quench them. And we invite you also to say, if you would like to, we are going to find a gracious way to do our work. Break out uh, in 30 minutes' time. Just go enjoy your time and time.